Hi, for this recording, I'm going to answer show that p of x equal to x cubed minus 6x plus 2 has exactly 3 real roots. No more, no less. For this, I need 3 results. One is the intermediate value theorem, another one is the localization of zero, and fundamental theorem of algebra. So to recall what the statement of this theorem says, let's look at the PowerPoint slide. So in the PowerPoint slide, intermediate value theorem says that if f is a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b, and f of a less than 0 less than f of b, or f of b less than 0 less than f of a also can, then there is a real number c in the open interval a to b, such that f of c is equal to 0. This is a statement of intermediate value theorem. And then, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that if p of x is a polynomial of degree n, then p of x equal to 0 has at most n roots in the real number. This is a fundamental theorem of algebra. That means that any polynomial degree n must at most has n, has at most n roots. And then location of zero of a polynomial. If p of x is a polynomial, where the leading coefficient is one, and the coefficient are a zero, a one, a two, all the way to a n minus one, for the coefficient of x one, x two, all the way to x power n minus one, then all the zeros of p, if any must lies in the open interval from minus m to m, where m is actually 1 plus maximal of absolute value of a sub a minus 1, absolute value of a sub a minus 2, and so on, until absolute value of a 1, absolute value of a 0. So now we can go back to the solution. So in this case, let p of x equal to x cubed minus 6x plus 2. So in this case, the leading coefficient of x cubed is only 1. Therefore, by the localization of zero, this is because p of x is a polynomial. Therefore, all zero of p of x lies in the interval from minus m to m, where m is equal to is let me write here, m is equal to the maximum of 1 plus maximum of absolute value of minus 6, absolute value of 2, absolute value of 6 is 6, absolute value of 2 is 2, so maximum of this thing is 6, plus 1 is 7. Therefore, all zero of p of x lies in the open interval from minus 7 to 7. This is by using localization of the law because P of X is a polynomial. Right? We are going to apply the intermediate value theorem. So now apply intermediate value theorem now. Now P of X is X cubed minus 6 plus 2. I know all the all the zero lies between minus 7 and 7. So I'm going to call up my calculator now. I call up my calculator. Let me call my calculator. So I'm going to set up a table now, 3 for table, then I enter the, the function, which is alpha x raised to power 3 minus 6 of x, 6 times x, alpha x, plus 2. Okay, equal, this is polynomial. Now starting from minus 7, since I know all the zeros lie between minus 7 and 7. So n at 7. Step is 1 as a ticket, so I'm going to get a table. So I find that the value of when x is equal to minus 7, f of x is negative, and I scroll down and find that the value of x is still negative when x is equal to minus 3. So when x is equal to minus 3, the value of x is minus 7. So when x is equal to minus 3, the function polynomial is minus 7 is negative. Now let's move on. What happened? Continue. When x is equal to Minus 2 polynomial is positive value now. Minus 1 is still positive. 0 is still positive. 
y is negative. So I'm going to take 0, for example, and the value of x equal to 0, the function is positive 2. All right? Then, continue. Next one, when x equal to 1, the function value is minus 3. x equal to 1, function value is minus 3 is negative. Let's continue. Let's say, when does it change sign? When x equal to 3, the function value is 11. Polynomial is 11. So, as we move on, all the value of polynomial will be positive already. Alright? So, so, in this case, I have the situation. If I try to figure out how the graph will look like, I can show you a brief picture showing you that Okay, the function I have, what I'm interested is actually for minus 3, 0, 1, and 3. Okay, so it says that when x equal to minus 3, the function value is minus 7. Let's say it's minus 2, 4, 6, 8, minus 7 is here. And, and the function value when, t, when x equal to 0, function value is 2. So let's say it's 2 is here. I have 2, 4, 6, 8. And then for x equal to 1, the function value is minus 3. Minus 2 minus 3. When x equal to 3, the function value is 11. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So somewhere is here. So if you try to draw the curve, I, I will say the curve will look something like this. Let me use a different color. The curve will look something like this, alright? Look something like this. It has come down, alright? Maybe your turn, but I know somewhere it must go up to, to join. So that means that I must find a zero between minus 3 and zero in the interval for minus 3 and zero because they have fp of minus 3 and p of zero opposite sign. I must find a zero between zero and 1. I must find a zero between 1 and 3. Right, so polynomial is continuous. So by the intermediate value theorem, there is a zero open interval. The first open interval is from minus three to zero, since p of minus three and p of zero are opposite sign. So minus three to zero. And the second interval is from zero to one, since p of zero and p of one are opposite sign from 1 to 3 since p of 1 and p of 3 are opposite sign so that means that polynomial px has at least 3 real zero now right one right interval for now we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of algebra since P of x is a polynomial of degree 3. P of x has 2 0 uh, and most 3 0. And then this statement, polynomial P x has at least 3 0, we conclude that. So, conclusion. So, conclude. Conclusion that P of x has exactly now 3 real zero this so I'm using 3 result here localization of zero localization of zero intermediate value theorem where polynomial has opposite value and opposite sign and fundamental theorem of algebra that is the end of the recording for the solution of showing p of x equal x cubed minus x plus 2 has exactly 3 real zero.